welcome to our press briefing, which is going to focus on the upcoming uh, ZEC process, which will enable citizens to inspect uh, the national voters' role. Uh, I apologize most sincerely for the late start, but without further ado, I'll defer proceedings to our elections directorate, which today is represented by Ms. Elia, Ellen Shirietenga, who's going to address us on where we are in as far as the election watch is concerned, as well as what citizens are to expect as we approach the voter inspection, voters' role inspection process. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Champion Afadzi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, basically, this uh, presser is to just provide an update as to uh, the electoral issues at play, and also in particular, uh, the aspect of uh, uh, voter, uh, voters' role inspection. But uh, as you are all aware, and I'm, so, I'm sure some, some of you have been uh, reading uh, through some uh, publications, uh, if we are to go by the timelines as projected in our constitution, our election should be uh, between the 20th of August and the 26th of, uh, of uh, August uh, 2023. Uh, those, those timelines came about after you know, uh, the due date for the expiry of this uh, current government, uh, which is supposed to expire on the 26th of, uh, July, of August. And also, uh, if we are to use the current, uh, voters, uh, current delimitation report, which was uh, gazetted on the 20, 20th of February, what it means is that uh, the, time, the six month uh, time lapse is on the 20th of uh, August 2023. So uh, the projected dates uh, for the uh, elections are, are between the 20th, and the 20th of August and the 26th of uh, August. Uh, be that as it may, uh, last week uh, Z announced uh, the voter's role uh, inspection uh, which is yet is supposed to commence uh, tomorrow, the 27th of, uh, of May, up to the 31st of May. That in itself is a clarion call to say that, uh, you know, uh, elections are here, and uh, we are anticipating that uh, the uh, proclam election proclamation should happen sometime uh, in the coming month of, uh, of uh, June. Uh, in that regard, we we'll would want to... Uh, uh, discuss uh, issues relating to elections. Uh, first and foremost, we're looking at the biometric, biometric uh, voter registration uh, process. Uh, Section uh, 26A of our Electoral uh, Act uh, speaks to the issue that, uh, you know, our voters' role is supposed to close uh, two days after proclamation. So what it means is that uh, the BVR, the voter registration processes, anyone who wants to register as a voter should re register before uh, two days before uh, the proclamation uh, is done. So as, as the C, we are calling upon all Zimbabweans who are eligible to vote, to register to vote, who are 18 years and above, we have not yet uh, registered to say, let's utilize this short window let's get registered before the uh, second day after the proclamation because if one does not utilize that opportunity what it means is that he or she won't be able uh, to to vote on election day in august and that in itself clearly it means that uh, you know you yeah, yeah, you one will be sitting away his or her responsibility you know to make uh, political and uh, democratic decisions and ultimately what it means is that you know someone out there would make the decision for him or her and there is there, should, there will be a risk then that you know wrong leaders will be uh, will be elected into office if you don't take up the call and take it as if it's your responsibility to register to vote and to vote at the end of the day. Uh, the ZEC uh, district of, uh, office, uh, offices are open. Uh, voter registration is a continuous process, so let's utilize the, uh, that opportunity. Let's go to the nearest uh, district uh, registration centers and register uh, to vote. Uh, in March uh, 2023, earlier this year, uh, there was a voter registration blitz, and uh, 
of course, as the Triple C, we took up this opportunity and we mobilized citizens together with other stakeholders out there. And the voters' role then, uh, we're told it was about 5.8 .8 million people were on the voters' roll. Uh, the sad part about it all is that uh, to date, we still do not know as to how many people uh, were registered during that uh, process. Of course, uh, we hear uh, message, we see messages here and there circulating in terms of the figures, but there is no official communication uh, from ZEC in terms of uh, the numbers of people that registered uh, during the voter registration in place, uh, during the voter registration plates in May, in March. So the challenge with regards to that is, uh, you know, this short window I spoke about earlier, should be utilized in terms of ascertaining areas where they were under registrations of voters, where people, where eligible citizens were not able to participate in the voter registration plates for one reason or another. But because there is a void in terms of that uh, information, at the end of the day, we are not able to, to tell, for example, in Mad North or in Mad South or in Murewa, if uh, you know there were people that failed to register but still are willing to register as voters. So that is a cause for consent to say, let there be no obscurity in terms of uh, you know, election data. The voters' role, for example, is a public document. Hence, such information should be at the disposal of all uh, citizens of uh, Zimbabwe. The second issue is uh, uh, the, the voter inspect, voters' role inspection. Like I said, uh, the dates are between the 27th of, uh, of May uh, to the 31st of May, and it's a good opportunity for citizens to physically uh, to uh, visit uh, the voter registration centers as announced by ZAC, and also utilize uh, the online uh, platforms uh, that have been pr uh, provided for by ZAC. Uh, what we are saying is the triple C, and that is a message to all Zimbabwean citizens out there who are eligible, we have registered as voters, to say this is a big, big opportunity for you. You need to check if your name is, is correctly captured on the voters roll. If, say, for example, your, your name has been misspelled, misspelled or possibly maybe your, your your identity number has not been captured uh, correctly, there is a high risk that you'll not be able to vote on election day. So rather, instead of you exposing yourself to that risk, just take up the opportunity, visit the, uh, the, near, the, the registration center uh, at, uh, at, ZEC, uh, at the ZEC ins uh, inspection uh, offices, and also at the same time utilize the online platforms. And secondly, the reason why we implore upon citizens to take up this opportunity is because uh, we have just come from we just come from a delimitation. There are lots of changes with regards to uh, constituency boundaries, uh, ward boundaries, and even some polling stations have been changed. You might be used to your own traditional polling station only to wake up today and be told, "No, uh, your name is not in that polling station." So really. It's, this is an opportunity for people to go out there and check and inspect the role to see whether their names are still in their, at their respective uh, polling stations where they used to, to vote at. And be that as it may, uh, we, have, uh, we are receiving uh, reports uh, from uh, the citizens out there which we will uh, be, uh, be referring to Zek for redress. For example, uh, we have uh, people in uh, Ward 18, here in Harare, which uh, before the limitation was Harare North. But now when they try to check in the uh, BVR uh, online uh, system, it is still, they are still reflected as uh, being under Harare North. Yet currently, with this current uh, delimitation, they are supposed to be in Harare East. So that is, so we have received uh, numerous uh, queries with, uh, in that regard to say that there have not been, you know, changes in terms of uh, uh, the new uh, delimitation uh, 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 boundary. So that is one issue that we are relaying to ZEC to actually address. And also we have had uh, instances, for example, in uh, 
in Bulawayo, there were, there, there's some wards uh, that uh, moved from Ward 4 to Ward 5, which is now under uh, Bulawayo South. We've noted that uh, about four of, uh, of, the, of the affected polling stations, they are not there in terms in the listed uh, voter in, inspection centers. So this is the kind of clarity that we kind of request from Zek to say, what has happened to those people that were in those uh, respective polling stations? Because they might risk at the end of the day that they might not be, they could have been left out and come election day and those people, if at all they do not check their, their names at the moment, they might risk having their names not being there on the voters' roll. So this is why we are encouraging people to check their names and also encouraging Zek to address uh, those, uh, those anomalies that have been identified. Uh, tied to the voters' uh, role inspection, we have noted also, you know, uh, the shenanigans from our colleagues in ZANU-PF. Just last week, there was a memo circulating uh, indicating that uh, there's going to be a voter uh, inspection uh, period and directing uh, their people and an organization called FES, uh, Forever Associates of Zimbabwe, and uh, also Heritage Trust, you know, to do the profiling of voters. And uh, clearly that is illegal. That is a, a, a clear infringement of the political rights of our citizens. No one needs to be profiled by anyone, and no one is, needs to be marshaled to any you know, polling station or whatever uh, inspection center by anyone. Just as well, we are receiving reports uh, from uh, Mondoro, for example, uh, Ward 5, Ward 19, uh, sorry, Ward 15, and Ward uh, 9, you know, Mufuka uh, Village where traditional leaders, uh, the headmen, have directed that all persons, they will go to the ins voters role inspection centers under their guidance. The, the Soboku will go in front and then it, the villagers will follow behind that person. So really, clearly, those are the infringement issues that we, we're talking about. The political rights of uh, Zimbabweans are being uh, affected in that regard. And uh, these are the issues that we want to point out to say the role of traditional leaders. Let it not be abused. We all know that the traditional leaders are supposed to be nonpartisan and they are not supposed to be marshalling people. And remember also during the by-elections last year, we complained about the aspect of command voting, where fairs also, and including some uh, traditional leaders, were actually forcing people to declare illiteracy so that they will, they will be assisted, uh, uh, assisted voters. So these are the issues that we've been highlighting to say, we are approaching an election. Let people exercise their free will to choose uh, the leaders of, uh, of choice. The, the third issue is the voters' role accessibility, credibility, and verifiability. Yes, we've uh, uh, told that the voters' role is ready for inspection. Clearly, what it, what it means is that the voters' role is available. So we, as the stakeholders, we continue imploring Zach to make his, uh, the, the voters' role available. The voters' role is a public document in accordance to our constitution, and the voters' role should be given to any person who pays the required money according to, the, to our laws, right? And also, be that as it may, one has an option to say, I want a soft copy of the voters' role or a printed copy of the voters' role. So this is where we are, to say, there is still no access to the voters' role. We are headed for an election, and a clearly a, a voters' role is like a syllabus. If you go to an exam, you know, having read, having had the syllabus, obviously you, you find you get a lot of surprises on exam day. So really, this is why we're saying if we need the voters' role. Let that voters' role be given to the public, and Remember, the voters' role should be verifiable, should be analyzable. We want to analyze that voters' role. It, it is our right as Zimbabweans to make sure that we analyze, we, we audit the voters' role. This is why even in our electoral reforms our blueprint, we spoke strongly about you know, the, the voters' role being subjected to an independent audit. That in itself brings credibility mm -hmm. to the electoral process. 
look at what happened in Kenya in, in their last election. They had uh, an independent auditor auditing uh, their voters role, KPMG. And whatever came out from that audit, the election management body made corrective measures. This is what we are asking from Zach. So let that voters' role be audited. Let citizens have access to the voters' role so that we know exactly what is it that we are dealing with. And most importantly, we want to know, for example, at a, at a ward or at a constituency, how many eligible people are there. You know, that is basic data, that is basic information which should be available for everyone. And we are political parties. We want to plan. And how do we plan if we do not have uh, the, that kind of uh, statistic? So this is where uh, we are concerned, where we raise our concern also with regards uh, to, the, uh, to, to the voters' roll. And the fourth issue uh, is the amendments to the Electoral Act. I think in that regard, let me take this opportunity to actually applaud our members of parliament. Uh, they've been working uh, tirelessly in parliament the past uh, two weeks in terms of uh, debating the, the Electoral Amendment uh, Act, which, was, uh, uh, which is before parliament. Uh, uh, let me hasten to say also as a party, we, we presented our own submissions. Uh, to the Electoral Amendment Bill, and uh, we are hoping that uh, they will be considered. But of course, uh, let me hasten to say, uh, as a country, we have had a problem, and clearly there hasn't been any political will uh, from the state to, uh, to, to, to actually implement uh, the electoral reforms. The Constitution was adopted in 2018, and uh, up to date, the electoral laws have not been aligned to the constitution. It's not like we are asking uh, the state or the Minister of Justice, Parliament or ZEC to implement something new. We are simply saying let the electoral laws be aligned to the constitution. And more so, there are some reforms that really do not need an act of uh, Parliament. Those are what we call administrative reforms, which are within the purview of ZEC. And those reforms are very critical in the sense that they, they, they build credibility to the election, uh, to the electoral process. For example, we, we talk about uh, issues around, uh, you know, results management. Even more, the Moklante Commission spoke to the issue of uh, ZEC implementing ICT systems that will ensure that the results are expedited so that we avoid a situation which a similar situation which happened on august one where some people eventually got killed because uh, there were protests around the delay in the results announcement <coughs> so we talk about even the issues around the, you know assisted voters that is an administrative issue it does not really need an act of parliament for for ZEC to actually say no these are the measures that we put in place to in put in place to ensure that you know we, we actually scrutinize or we actually assess the people that qualified for assisted voting privileges so let's let's sit down as zimbabweans and also as uh, the triple c this is why we prepared our electoral uh, blueprint, which we called prepare the pre-electoral pact on electoral reforms, which we offered not just to citizens only, but even to ZEC, even to the Minister of, uh, you know, of Justice and other civic society organizations, other you know, stakeholders that are responsible for elections to say this is our offering is the triple C. Let's have dialogue in terms of the electoral, of what we expect in terms of of the electoral reform so that at the end of the day we have an election which is satisfactory for, uh, for everyone, an election that has credibility and an election that, that, that has integrity. Uh, fifthly, and the last issue is the aspect around the nomination fees. Uh, last year, uh, ZEC gazetted uh, fees, uh, nomination fees uh, for candidates that aspire to be uh, in parliament. Uh, or even uh, the presidential affairs. Uh, when we did our calculations as uh, the citizens' movement, we realized that we'll need around uh, 244,000 US dollars, which is a quarter of a million dollars, you know, to just fill the candidates uh, uh, throughout the country. 
So, and that is pretty unsustainable. And uh, we're looking at a country called Zimbabwe, which is supposed to be a multi-party democracy. If we are a party, which at the end of the day, we are not able to fill the candidates uh, throughout the country, then we cease to be a multi-party democracy. And if we have a, 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 a candidates, for example, you go to our constitution, it says each and every eligible citizen has the right to vote or has the right to be voted for. So surely if I want to be a presidential candidate, but then I cannot afford the, uh, the 20,000 US dollars being demanded by Zek, then that clearly that is an infringement of my political right to be voted for. So this is why this is our call to Zek to say, uh, please review those fees. And those fees also, they can, they are, it's difficult to justify them. How do you justify a member of parliament, an aspiring member of parliament, paying one thousand US dollars to be to be a candidate? So that is a cause for concern, and we are engaging Zek in that regard to say, let there be uh, engagements in in terms of the multi-party uh, stakeholders meetings to see how best those fees can be reviewed, so that all eligible persons uh, that uh, feel they want to be candidates uh, are not uh, uh, left out. So basically, this is uh, our presser today. But let me just say, what is our call? What is it that we want uh, from, uh, we expect from today's presser? Firstly, is the voters' role. We are asking that the voters be released uh, immediately and above all, before the proclamation. That is what we are requesting for. The fact that uh, the voters' roll is out there for, you know, for scrutiny, for inspection by citizens, clearly the voters' roll is ready. So there is no reason why we, sh we shouldn't be given access to the voters' roll. And uh, by the way, voter inspection is not a uh, voters' roll audit. You can inspect, when you go to inspect, it's just you as an individual inspecting whether your name is there. But then auditing is a different issue altogether. Verifying is a different issue altogether. So this is why it's important that we are given the soft copy of the voters' room. And uh, secondly, as I uh, indicated earlier, we are imploring uh, to all eligible citizens above the age, 18 years and above, to say this is the last call <coughs> for you to register as a voter. If you don't take that up that opportunity, then you won't be able to vote on election day. So please, let's take it up and exercise our, 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 our political rights as the citizens of Zimbabwe. Of course, the, the third issue is to do with the voters' role inspection. I spoke about the importance of us inspecting the voters' role, why we need to inspect the voters' role. Let's not risk ourselves being turned away on election day because of one mistake which you could have been avoided by us checking our names on the voters' role. So let's utilize this opportunity, inspect the voters' role, and identify where there are anomalies or errors so that they, are, they be corrected on time. And lastly, of course, is the aspect of electoral reforms. As the citizens' movement, we, are, we have a keen interest on electoral reforms, and our MPs are busy in that regard to say, to push as many electoral reforms as possible through the parliamentary process. And also, we continue imploring ZEC to actually, you know, promulgate the administrative reforms which are, with, which are within their purview which really do not need an act of parliament. So I, that's all I, I thank you. Thank you very much to Ms. Shiri Edenga. We'll just open the floor to a few questions, uh, should any journalists have them, and then we'll just wrap the presser up. As usual, please just uh, put your hand up, indicate which news house you come from, and uh, just ask one question so that we can get uh, a few within the time that we've got. Yes, sir. <coughs> You alluded to the ZPF organizations, the um, organizations, giving 
access to the water source. Uh, what implication does it have <coughs> on the uh, electoral system as it is and any limit? So obviously, in terms of our constitution, the voters' role should be accessed by every single political party. In fact, every citizen who's able to pay the fee uh, should obtain a copy of that voters' role. What we've seen since the voter registration process is that it would appear that Zanu Piet has a copy of this yeah. voters' role. Why do we say this? You saw all the WhatsApp messages or the, the SMS messages that everyone was receiving, which were allegedly from uh, Mr. Edim Nangagwa saying, please join uh, this WhatsApp group that belongs to ZANU PF. What's interesting about those WhatsApp messages is that they correlate with the new boundaries and not the old ones. So it's obvious that there are two issues. The voters' role doesn't disclose people's phone numbers. The question that we ask Zek is, how did ZANU PF obtain each and every citizen's phone number? That information is in Zek's database. Does ZANU PF have to that database. That's the question that we're asking in terms of uh, the law. More fundamentally than that, if Mr. Mnangag was able to send those messages, it means he's got some information that we don't have, because certainly we don't have the kind of information that would allow us to uh, establish who is registered in what, which constituency, and also the polling areas and polling stations. And so we continue to demand to Zek this election should not only be free and fair, it should also be credible. You can't give one party the voters' role and then deny it to another. You can't disclose uh, people's phone numbers, their private data to one political party uh, and then obviously uh, abuse that information for political purposes. This is why we continue to say that ZEC has a constitutional obligation to be independent, to be nonpartisan. They cannot take zanu side. We then have the problem of FAZ and uh, the Heritage Trust, these shady institutions that are being used by Mr. Mnangagwa. Now the question we ask is this, the Constitution provides for a central intelligence organization. Who are these shady organizations? What is their mandate? Where do they come from? What job are they performing? We don't want any intimidation of voters. We don't want them to profile people. We saw them frog marching sometimes citizens to, to go and vote in ZANU PF primaries. And so we've continuously said that we take issue with the interference of FAZ, FAS, and the Heritage Trust with the general rights of citizens. They cannot be allowed to intimidate and harass citizens. This election should be free and fair. Everybody's vote is secret, so we don't want them coming in to frog march people. Ellen already indicated that we don't want traditional uh, leaders also abused by zanu -PF, where they're given these unconstitutional instructions. The courts have already said that traditional leaders, there's a case directly involving um, one of our chiefs, I think it's a publicly available uh, case, saying you cannot get involved in partisan politics. And so we hold them to account in that regard. We expect them to uphold that constitutional obligation. They cannot bury its head in the sand where these illegal processes are taking place. Okay, yeah, also uh, let me just add briefly to that. This is why we keep on calling for uh, a, an, an enforceable con code of conduct for all uh, parties that are involved in electoral, play, uh, uh, electoral spaces. For example, we spoke about uh, the traditional leaders. You know, it seems there are no punitive measures for, for, for such uh, transgressions. So our MPs in Parliament currently they are also put, uh, pushing for uh, enforceable codes of conduct, which also regulate that kind of behavior of traditional leaders, that kind of behavior of even, you know, uh, civic uh, society organizations or community-based <coughs> organizations that, uh, that uh, conduct uh, these trans transgressions, like what uh, FAZE and the Heritage uh, Trust are doing. Thank you so much, Champion Ellen. Are there any other questions? If there are no other questions, that brings our press briefing to a close. Uh, as Champion Ellen said, let's continue to register to vote. Let's all ensure that we inspect the voters' role. Ideally, if you can do so, go there physically so that you're familiar with your, 
your polling station so that you see the voters roll and you can actually verify and confirm uh, that your name is there. This is the year of citizens' victory for change, as has been articulated by our change champion in chief, President Nelson Chamis. And so we must ensure that all steps are taken to, to, to make sure that we've got a big win uh, for the citizens this year. Uh, for our part as the Triple C, we're doing everything to ensure that the vote is defended and protected. Uh, we've put in place safeguards to ensure that we recruit polling agents in all of the 210 constituencies to ensure that there's no electoral mal malpractice that takes place in the coming election. So thank you very much, uh, and we'll look forward to, to addressing you in the coming press briefings. Thank you.